from IVCC. And it's my pleasure today to talk about the IVCC portfolio and it's relevant for arboviruses. If we can bring the presentation up, please. Um, thanks very much to Luke for a sort of introduction to IVCC and to having illustrated the issue with the small number of um, groups of insecticide which are now available for uh, vector control. And certainly for adult vector control, we have been in a really dire situation. Um, looking at the malaria space, um, long-lasting insecticidal nets, um, one mode of action, um, and uh, for space spray and so forth, still only two modes of action, um, acetyl cholinesterase inhibition and the sodium channel. IVCC has had a role in trying to help industry with further development of new uh, chemicals with new modes of action. Now, um, I'm using the title that was kindly given to me by the organizers. Um, it says the IVCC por portfolio. In fact, there is no IVCC portfolio as such. The products are owned by the companies that have developed them. And IVCC has provided some level of support. Um, in some cases, um, a considerable level of support. In other cases, just some um, supporting um, um, trials help, for example. I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, IVCC. What is IVCC? Um, why do we have it? And um, how does it work within the time? So IVCC is a, a product development partnership um, investing donor funds in research and development to overcome barriers to innovation in vector control. And our focus has been around malaria almost exclusively and will stay dominated uh, around malaria into the future. However, the remit does extend to neglected tropical diseases affected by, you know, by, um, by vectors. Um, and I'll refer to that at the end. IVCC is a partnership and is totally reliant on working with a set of um, partners, both uh, donor organizations, um, industry partners, um, policy bodies, in particular the World Health Organization, um, field stations, and uh, research institutes, uh, with some, some key co collaborations there. We are supported by expert scientific advisory committees. These are independent experts who sit to advise IVCC and the partner companies on how to take products forward. Um, very briefly to illustrate the IVCC strategy and funding. So this slide shows the principal funders. The IVCC as an uh, integrated um, in innovative vector control consortium was set up by the um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, and based out of Liverpool in 2005. And since then has received funding from um, uh, the US from Switzerland and from the UK and from Unitaid. And this diagram shows each body focusing on particular project areas. Um, the work is split basically into three um, areas and I'll focus today on the development, development for new groups of um, active ingredients, novel modes of action, also for supporting the repurposing of insecticides from agriculture into public health and looking at new paradigms, particularly for outdoor transmission. And then very, very briefly on the enabling front, working with other stakeholders, support the um, innovation to impact stage, trying to help to streamline uh, regulation, approval, and market mechanisms to support innovation. Uh, and the third part of it is the green section the delivery, once you have a product that's approved, helping it to actually make an impact in the market and to be accepted and correctly priced and so forth. So uh, I won't uh, dwell on this because I think Luke very, very uh, ably um, demonstrated this and you'll see 
without having collaborated with him, there's some similarity in our slides here, but just very quickly to look at it from the point of view of industry, um, why have we got um, barriers to innovation? Well, um, it's because of the um, economics. Um, we see products coming through from agriculture. These are bioscience companies, essentially, looking at um, 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 making money out of um, the, the opportunity to develop and do research and develop bioscience solutions. And here, if you look at the, the bioscience opportunity in total, totally dominated by pharmaceuticals, uh, the agricultural sector, some, some $50 billion, 30 billion uh, in uh, pesticides, 8 billion of those roughly insecticides, and yes, it was quite right, below 1 billion, you have to get your magnifying glass out to look at it uh, in terms of the opportunity for vector control products. So where would you invest your money if you were a bioscience company? I think this is very similar to a slide that um, Luke showed, consolidation. So we only now have a very small number of companies seriously involved in R&D that's relevant to public health. Significant barriers, and I think this is a very similar slide, so we won't dwell on it. Time to market and expense of development. Combining all those things, you can see on the right-hand side of this slide a whole series of barriers to innovation. Um, and um, the, the, the point of IVCC, why IVCC, is to help to bridge between those barriers um, and the public health needs. So we know there are plenty of barriers, but what about the public health needs? Well, we, you know, products that are innovative are required, uh, ones that will um, outperform old technologies, ones that will address resistance, that will be available rapidly on the market, that will be low cost for the end user and that will be supplied effectively in a sustained way, way right across uh, the regions where they're required. Um, so that's where the three elements of IVCC come in, helping to push on the supply side to support the R&D effort, and then helping to pull those products through into market using those donor funds. Um, how does IVCC work? Well, by very carefully selecting the products and projects to work on and to support, um, and looking at these in the round, not just product efficacy, for example, but looking at a, a, a total product profile, um, looking at all the different aspects that you have to have in place, um, safety angle, um, environmental impact angle, um, the cost of production angle, and so forth, um, all need to be considered. The project partner is critical as well. Is this partner capable of delivering this product to market, getting it through all the regulatory approval track and distributed to where it's needed. And the investment case, you know, what's the size of this opportunity? How long is it going to take to, to get to market? So these are projects that are selected carefully and then shepherded through a gated process to support them to become optimized. Where does the um, portfolio stand um, now? Um, and uh, this is a little bit detailed for you to see, I think, from, from a distance. But um, it's starting on the left-hand side, moving to the right-hand side in terms of time. There are two, the two green dots on the left are the products that are already on the market, having had um, IVCC support. And that's uh, two long-lasting indoor residual spray products, the Actelic CS uh, from Syngenta. Uh, and the KO3 and Polyzone uh, from Bayer. And as we move forward to the next rung, we're talking about 2017, and you can see two, uh, two uh, blue blobs there, um, and these are uh, next ones uh, on the list. Uh, and here we're talking about um, two uh, long-lasting insecticidal nets, the Interceptor G2 that's already been referred to, um, and uh, that's a product uh, is from BASF, and the Oliset Duo from uh, Sumitomo. And then going down to the bottom of the diagram, there are three orange um, circles, which I'll refer to later, and these are the new paradigm areas of work, looking at the outdoor transmission. And then the central bunch of uh, green circles represent further uh, long-lasting indoor residual sprays that are coming through to market 
uh, and uh, aiming to um, break resistance. So we have um, Sumi Shield from uh, Sumitomo, uh, Fludora Fusion uh, from Vea, um, and we have Phantom from BSF. Uh, beyond that, we're talking about 2019 onwards. And I can't be too specific there. Obviously, there are confidentiality um, clauses and arrangements between IVCC and the companies involved. And at this stage, these products are all pre-development, and therefore, it's still um, unclear exactly you know, how many which are going to be coming through, but we could expect a further dual active um, insecticidal net and potentially uh, two further indoor residual sprays. And then right on the right-hand side, we have in the 2020 to 25 area, three completely novel active ingredients from three separate companies. And these will be um, not overlapping with any existing current um, active ingredient groups. And uh, they represent the prospects for the future and for future um, resistance management. But note they're in the 2020 to 2025 bracket. Um, I mentioned Actelic um, CS. Um, so this is already on the market. And th th this has been looking quite promising. This is actually monitoring, um, monitoring results rather than a trial results, but showing that you can reduce the parasitemia and RDT rates uh, shifting from pyrethroid to actelic CS in a zone with pyrethroid-resistant anopheles. It's, in fact, from North, Gam North um, Ghana. And this is a whole initiative that IVCC has in the delivery sector, that bottom third of the circle that I mentioned, um, the next generation IRS, which is a collaboration with a series of organizations supported by a $65 million grant from Unitaid. Looking in a bit more detail um, at the upcoming um, set of repurposed um, products for IRS and LLIN, I put little stars there against the active ingredients simply to say, are they active um, against AD species? Because this is really dominated by a talk on Anopheles. That's been the focus. And, and yes, they are. So um, if you look um, at, at, at the three new products coming through, all of the active ingredients involved there are um, intrinsically active against ADs. But these are IRS products. And then LLINs, we have the same story, the two LLIN products intrinsically active. I probably should mention the active, active ingredients here. So um, the um, IRS is the phantom um, product, uh, chlorphenopar, um, Sumi Shield, clothianidin um, product, and the Fudora Fusion is clothianidin and deltamethrin. So we have some new um, modes of action there. Uh, and on the nets, we have the interceptor G2, which is alpha cyphermethrin and chlorphenopar, and the Oliset Dew is permethrin and pyriproxifen. Outdoor transmission, looking at the um, new paradigms, particularly relevant for um, ADs, of course. Um, this work was originally started for malaria. And what IVCC done is to select three of the new paradigm opportunities um, and to sponsor them. And we've seen this diagram before, looking at the different opportunities around the life cycle uh, and behavior pattern of the mosquito, not just the IRS and LLIN opportunity, but I think um, uh, Stephen Dobson showed, showed this, uh, this slide before. So there are many opportunities here around the new paradigms. We selected three to invest in, um, and that's the attractive toxic sugar baits, and this project's already been referred to, um, ongoing in Mali, looking at a longer lasting bait station, a low cost solution. That technology is obviously very much relevant to ADs, and uh, Rue de Chou's already talked about the ATSB in the context of ADs. This is quite an interesting one because we're looking at a very low cost bait station that will last you know, a considerable period of time. The swarm identification and uh, control, um, looking at targeting the mating swarms, that uh, project is. Uh, ongoing in Burkina Faso and Tanzania and Pushpul. Pushpul um, looking at the 
repellency combined with the attraction to clear a peri-domestic area um, in front of the house. Uh, and that's uh, work going on uh, in uh, Kenya and Tanzania, partnership between Wageningen and, and Swiss Tropical Health. So I'll just accelerate towards the finish now. There are some tools that have been developed by um, I IVCC and in, in partnership with organizations, the Insecticide Quantification Kits, supporting the monitoring of the quality assurance of insecticide applications, the uh, disease data monitoring systems, supporting the decision making and organization of data, and the resistance simulation, supporting the communication and understanding of resistance management. Um, I won't dwell on this, but IVCC is now pursuing the other neglected tropical disease targets and is not totally focused on malaria, really, as of, as of now. Um, I've been appointed uh, within IVCC to focus on Aedes and uh, Zika, and we will, during 2017, be trying to map across properly um, our existing portfolio against the opportunities in Aedes. I won't go into the details on that slide, but we'll be using um, a, a sort of matrix approach for that. And, um, and finally, this is um, the other area of work that I will be um, involved in, uh, and we will be setting up an um, expert scientific advisory committee of um, independent experts to support an initiative around Zika. Um, and this is in conjunction with and funded by USAID, picking up on nine of the projects that they have um, agreed to fund under their Grand Challenge initiative um, earlier this year. This work's now kicking off and will be a two-year phase of work. Uh, and these are projects looking at innovative solutions for vector control um, and for um, 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 vector monitoring and for information systems. So um, I invite um, anyone who is interested in this field and feels you could potentially contribute uh, on the advisory committee or to support this uh, area to, to speak to me. I'd be delighted to give you some more information. Thank you.